This video training program by Barry Costa is designed to teach a basic carpet repair technique to the beginning flooring professional or household do-it-yourselfer. Barry Costa is a certified master carpet installer, inspector, and trainer. Each year, Barry trains thousands of flooring installation, cleaning, and restoration professionals in water damage restoration and carpet repair and reinstallation techniques. In this training video, Barry uses the new Cool Glide fastening system, which simplifies carpet repairs. In the past, even the most basic carpet repair required an experienced professional. Now, with the Cool Glide system, basic carpet repairs are so simple that just about anyone can do them. For more difficult carpet repairs, a trained professional is still needed, but Cool Glide makes both basic and intermediate repairs easy. For information on many more basic and intermediate carpet repairs, Barry offers a complete DVD training package of specific step-by-step how-tos. At the end of this video, there's information on how to order this course. Oh, hi everyone. My name is Barry Costa. And I'm here today to show you a revolutionary new system of doing carpet repairs. Funny thing about this system here is it doesn't just, or isn't just used for repairs. It's also used for carpet installation. Carpet installation repairs can be done by the novice, by the experienced, by the super experienced out there. And people that know me know that it takes an awful lot to get my attention on something new to our industry. Well, this tool here really got my attention. I teach carpet repair schools from here to Australia, the US to Australia, and go to Canada, England, and so on. And I like always to give my students a way out if there's a problem. Well, this isn't just simple to use. If you don't like what you've just done, you've got a way out. You've got a way to correct your repair. So this video is going to show a couple different things. One, all the benefits that this machine brings to both the novice the seasoned installer, the repair technician, whether you're in a home, a commercial building, a major hotel, all depending upon the type of carpet you're dealing with, how it's installed, how much effort you want to put in, do you want to try it yourself, are you a seasoned a repair technician that already knows how to do this but you want to find a better way to do it, a quicker way, more money? Well, I hope you watch this tape. The other purpose is to show the novice exactly, hey, I can do this repair because there's a lot of people that really want to do their own repairs and their own work in their own home or business or maybe it's a maintenance staff or build, building service contractor in a large hotel they have these burns that they want to attempt um, with enough practice and with the right equipment even the novice can make a repair look really good so first thing I think we need to do is take a look at the tools that it takes to do our repairs All right, let's take a look at the items needed to do the repair for the novice. First, we need a piece of carpet. If you don't have a donor piece of carpet, folks, and you cut a hole in your floor, you're going to be a little bit upset. I'm going to want you to have a hammer and some nails. And in this case here, we're going to be doing the repair on a wood floor. So wood nails are going to be preferred. Concrete floor has some concrete nails. Once we have stabilized the carpet so that it doesn't move, we're then going to use what's called a cookie cutter. The cookie cutter is going to give you a very unique shape cut and it'll be the same cut on both pieces. Now again, this is for the novice only. Once we've cut that piece out, we're going to mark the back for pile A. But to find the pile, we're going to use a dowel and a piece of paper. Actually, anything round will work, but I like a dowel. I tend to have fat hands here. We'll mark the back for the pile A by using a leaded pencil. Now that we've done that, we have to seal the edges, both of the cutout and of the piece that you're going to fill the cutout with. We can either use latex or we can use thermal glue. Once we have them sealed, we're then going to put this very special tape underneath the carpet. Now this is an important point. Not any tape can be used in this system. There's a very specific tape that needs to be used. And the nice thing about the Cool Glide tool is if you're not using the right tape, it's smarter than you and I. It's gonna, you're gonna have what we call a blinker. It's just simply not gonna function. 
Once you have your tape underneath, we have all the time in the world to put our piece where it needs to go. We will then use the Cool Glide. The Cool Glide, I'm going to show you how to function with this tool. It's going to do all the work for you, melting that glue on the tape. Once that's done, we're going to roll the uh, 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 section with a starred seam roller. And when that's done, we may fine tune it by using a carpet awl and a pair of duckbill napping shears. So those are the various items that we need to do the repair for the novice. Okay, let's identify some of our carpets. Over 90% of the carpets out there are tufted. You might have one of these in your building. Well, let's take a look at another group over here. In my carpet repair class, I teach my students these two styles of carpets right here, constructions, are ideal for cookie cutter repairs. Why? No face yarns to bevel whatsoever. Boy, you'll have a nice looking repair with that. Let's move over here. These are called tufted carpets. They're tufted because they have a primary backing. Again, you can use a cookie cutter repair on this, but you do run the risk of cutting some face yarns. In fact, if you look over here, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. If I cut a circle out of this carpet, I am risking cutting some of these yarns. Now, that may be fine in the building that you're working in. Let's decide when would I even cut into the carpet? When would I become a surgeon and do an operation? Well, how about these cases? Burns in a carpet. We haven't created a chemical agent to remove a burn yet. Uh, how about a stain that uh, is not responding to any treatments? Maybe you're not skilled in color repair. Uh, how about a spot that you don't have the skill to remove? These are all cases when these damaged areas can physically be removed through surgery. Now, as far as where to get your donor piece, well, quite often when an installer installs carpet, they're going to leave some scraps behind, some uh, remnant pieces. Let's say the person has no remnants. Well, you have some options. Take a look in a closet. And if you're going to take the piece from the closet, I would suggest hard left to hard right when you open up the door. Because when I open up a door and look inside, I see the far corners, not the near corners. The repair that we're going to do right now is for what's called a stretched in installed carpet. Now what's a stretched in installed carpet? It's quite simple. This carpet was installed, as you can see, with tack strip and pad underneath. So if you have one that was stretched in, and if you go to the middle of the room and do this, and see that carpet either snap back or float, you know that it's been stretched in and it has these pins on the outside edge. Here's the tools we need again. Hammer, nails, and a cookie cutter. So with the nails, I want you to place a nail far enough away from that dot or from that burn so that we maintain the stretch tension that that installer put into your carpet. Because as soon as you cut into this carpet, that space is going to expand very, very rapidly. Let's take the cookie cutter. The cookie cutter I'm using, there's different styles. This one has four pins that will implant into the carpet to hold it firmly. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it. Once I hear and feel that I've gone through the carpet, I'll lift the tool and I'll remove that piece. We've just cut out the bad piece. Do you see how simple that was? Okay, it's time for the next phase. We have a hole in the carpet. You have two choices, move the sofa, or you better build a piece that's gonna fill that hole. So let's find the lay of the pile, okay? As I brush my hand, this, when I look at it, looks light and looks dark. But I have a better way for you. Let's take a piece of paper, and anything round, a dowel works quite well, and I'm gonna push down and roll the dowel. I want you to notice the paper is crashing into my stain nails here. That means all of these yarns, like a hurricane, are leaning all the trees in that direction. So I know that lay. Now, for, for your purpose, I'm going to take a lead pencil and I'm gonna mark an arrow on the back, which is telling me the lay is going towards you. Now, in reality, let's say it's going toward the fireplace in the house. You don't need to mark it. I don't think your carpet's gonna leave your building. 
All right, let's reach down. Let's get our donor piece. Very important, everyone. We're going to find the lay of the pile, and then we're going to take a look at this carpet and that carpet, looking for color match and texture match. You want uniformity if we can. As I look at the back, I see these picks of the back. That's what these lines here are called. Flat and shiny, thick and round. Okay, flat and shiny tells me length direction. Let me take this, let me take this paper and lo and behold, here we go again. I think I'm going to Vegas. I found the right lay of the pile all over again. So let me mark the back with my arrow. I'm going to place the cookie cutter now on the back of this carpet and I'm going to place it over the arrow so that I remember exactly where we are. We'll implant the four pins into the back of the carpet and again I'm going to turn. Now before I turn I want you to see something here. I'm going to push down on this. Do you notice how those yarns have beveled out? They're bending out. Well if I push down too hard I'm going to again cut those and make shorter yarns. I don't want to make shorter yarns. So I want you to be thinking, let's just cut, not so deep that we cut the yarns, but just the backing material. The pins are planted. Let me start to turn. Now I'm listening carefully. When it sounds like I've gone through the back, which I have, no more noises, stop. Remove this, and let's take our piece out. Ah, lo and behold, didn't cut all the way through. Don't panic. You could take a knife and slightly follow, or just follow your curve all the way around, cutting the remainder of that circle. I now have my donor piece, and I know it's going to fit. I use the same tool. When we cut that piece of carpet out, we are dealing with what's called a cut pile carpet. It has these yarns that go straight up like this. Sometimes they have a twist. Sometimes they're just straight up. But I want you to see the carpet I'm got my cookie cutter on right now. This is a loop pile or loop construction carpet. When you cut your donor piece out on a loop, make sure you cut the piece out from the top, not from the bottom. Because if you cut it literally from this side, you're going to end up with a lot of things like this all over the place. So make sure you cut this one from the top. All right, final phase time, everyone. It's time to put our circle into our circle here. So let's take some of this special tape. Notice it has a metallic backing to it. I want to cut a piece of tape that extends beyond the circle. Now the reason why I'm going to show you this is, uh, uh, again, if you are following the rows, your piece of tape may need to be a lot larger, smaller, but you want to make sure it extends beyond that repair area. Let's place the tape under the carpet. I find if you fold the tape and use a carpet awl, pointy item, grab the carpet, lift, slide it underneath the carpet, slide it underneath the carpet, and begin to open it up and spread it out underneath your circle. With my finger, I'm going to make sure that it has extended on all 360 degree edges. It has. And that line there, if you've cut a circle, is a great guide also, isn't it? If you're right in the middle. Okay, our tape is underneath. Now it's time to seal our edges. Now everyone, when you seal edges, we're going to use a latex-based or an acrylic-based type adhesive. And a bottle similar to this, if it has a red L-shaped tip, you may have a bottle that has a blue tip, wherever you're uh, getting your materials from. There may be no tip, and in case, you may need to use your finger to be the bottom of the L. What we want to do is we want to place latex right where these two backings meet each other. We don't want to let the latex or the acrylic adhesive go up the shafts of the fibers. And I'm going to seal my donor piece placing the latex only on the bottom edge of the carpet. Now this is very important everyone. If we don't seal this carpet, the backings could come apart, yarns can come out easily. Now with your thumb and your finger, gently work that latex in. 
This is called seam sealing. Very important to do on all seams. Let me move my piece over here. If those yarns seem to be falling in your way, take some masking tape. Touch the tips of the fibers and draw them back. That keeps them from falling inside that space. Okay, let's apply the seam sealer now on this part of my carpet. Let's see if I can switch hands here, be ambidextrous. Use my other side too. Now I'm going to use my finger to work that latex in. And again, please be careful. Don't let it go up the yarns. All right, now folks, we have to give that latex a chance to, to reach what we call setup time. It has to dry. It might take anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes to do that. So why don't we pause and come back when we are all dry and ready to go. All this latex is dry. There's no chance of me getting any residue latex on my yarns. Now here is where the cool, cool Glide absolutely shines. It absolutely shines. In the old days, when we were using glue guns to put the piece in, we would have to secure the tape first to the outside of the carpet by putting things of glue, strings of glue, all the way around that circle. Then we'd be putting glue inside the circle Folks, once you put the glue on that tape, you have about eight to 10 seconds to put this piece in, not only correctly, but also not trap any yarns in your seam. With this system, the Cool Glide, no worry. You're not against time. It's not a race against time. It's kind of like the way I run my marathons. My goal is to finish the same day I start. It's been a good marathon if that happens. So watch what I'm gonna do. If you remember, our pile is going towards the fireplace. Here's my arrow telling me that's the pile lay. So I'm going to place this in and with my fingers I'm going to grab the carpet, lift it, and make sure that the backings touch and the yarns follow the backings. I want to make sure I don't trap any yarns anywhere all the way around this repair. Now this is the beauty of the system. I'm going to get this position perfectly before, as they say in carpentry, nail it, okay? I'm going to make sure everything's lined up exactly, oh, I caught a yarn there, so I'm going to reach in and just free willy here, free that yarn right out of there. There we go. Go all the way around, make sure no yarns are trapped. Make sure everything is exactly the way I want it. Hey, that looks good. That looks good. All right, here's the beauty. Hey, let me get this tape out of the way. I really don't need that tape. Okay, all yarns. One more quick check. Now, unlike a glue gun, a glue gun you have to plug in and let it heat up, not the Cool Glide. As soon as you plug it in, a fan turns on, it's ready to use. You're ready to go. And when you're done, by the way, no need to wait for it to cool down. Unplug it, pack it away, and leave. Let's talk about this letter T, transverse mode. I'm going to press that letter T, lights on. That means basically this tool is going to stay on for about four and a half seconds. Here's my circle. I'm going to split that circle. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to press the side of that green button. When I press the side of the green button, you're going to notice a light is going to go on, a green light. And if it senses that the proper tape is underneath, it's going to remain solid. You want to make sure that the Cool Glide covers the entire area of tape. But never do you want to press that button more than four times in one area without waiting at least 30 seconds or more before you press that button again. So let's press that green button and see if it senses the right tape. In fact, it does. Green light is on and it is now working. Now, right now, boom, green light is off. So I'm going to move it on this portion of the circle. I'm going to press the side of the green button. There we go. It found the tape. It's beginning to reflect off the back of that tape and beginning to melt that adhesive that was on the tape. Now I'm going to rotate it halfway again. And this middle triangle, by the way, is in the middle of my circle. I'm going to press the side of the green button. There we go. It's sending the waves safely through the carpet to melt that adhesive. And the light is off. 
And one final move and one final press. Boom. And when that light goes off, believe it or not, all that glue that was on the back of the tape is melted. Let me move the cool glide. Now I'm going to roll this with a starred seam roller. Because I took all the time in the world at the beginning to make sure everything was lined up well, even a novice can cut a circle, possibly have a few beveled yarns, but because we paid attention to nap lay or pile lay as we call it, we've got a beautiful looking repair. You know what, we're gonna let this cool down because I wanna show you one more advantage of it. It's cool, I'm feeling it. It's cool looking and it's cool to the touch. Let's check, see how well it's secured. That is in there, it's not coming out. Being a teacher, I always like to give my students a way to get out of a problem. Let's say for some reason, you don't like what that looks like. The homeowner comes home and says, oh gosh, you know, couldn't it be better than that? You have a second try. I can actually melt that piece right back out again and use the exact same tape that's in there right now to put that piece back in. I'm gonna to try to find the center of that area there and it's still in transverse mode, still on low. Folks, I'm gonna press the side of that green button and I'm going to remelt the adhesive that's on that tape. Now you can't do that with a glue gun. You don't get a second chance Let's see if that fired up enough that I can release that almost. I'm going to do it one more time and I'm going to switch positions. That was a good test. Now watch what I'm going to be able to do with my piece. I'm going to take that donor piece and I'm simply going to pull it right back out again. I still have my arrow. I still have my circle. But let me place this back in again. See, I have a second chance. Let's get these nails out of there, which allows that normal stretch tension that the installer placed on that carpet to just spread out and regain an even feel all the way through. And uh, we're in great shape here. Hey, little quick trick. If you want to make sure you can find your nails, take any scrap piece of uh, material uh, backwards like this and you can uh, actually find your nails easily. Uh, make sure you get them all out. And that is really important. Make sure all those nails are out of that carpet. We don't want anyone to get hurt. Okay, everyone, you know what? Let's recap all the benefits of using the Cool Glide system here. Remember, there's no wait time to heat up, also, no wait time to pack up, no heat distortions. It warms the carpet up, makes it much more malleable to work with. You have no pressure with time to put that piece in, and you get a second chance if you don't like what your final result is. And finally, all of your rugs now can be put together from the top. You can see what you're doing, not needing to use a T-nozzle, glue gun, and scrim on the back. So, folks, take a look. What do you think? Wasn't that easy? With the Cool Glide, the right tape, a little bit of practice, you can do really quality work out there. Hey, good luck with it all. And you know, if you want more information on how this is done, and or you're ready to take the next step, I have a DVD series available. We sure hope you look for it. For more information on basic and intermediate techniques of carpet repair, including direct glue down sectioning and surface grafting, you may order Barry Costa's Professional Sectioning and Grafting Made Simple by phone, email, or U.S. mail. The instructions in this video are intended to assist you with a simple repair, but do not guarantee a satisfactory result. If you feel a repair is too difficult or your attempt at a repair fails to produce the results you want, we recommend that you contact an IICRC Certified Carpet Repair and Reinstallation Technician or a carpet installation contractor trained and certified by the CFI, WFCA, the United Brotherhood of Carpenters, or the Install Program. Mr. Costa and the makers of Cool Glide Tools and Tapes are donating the proceeds of this video to cancer research in honor of those who have survived and those who have not.
Let's talk about some additional things about the Cool Glide and what it does for you. I'm a certified carpet installer and uh, also do water damage restoration and uh, repairs. Well, this tool again transfers over to many, many different things. Let's talk about installation and seams. If you're going to use a Cool Glide in putting a seam together, number one, make sure you cut that tape right to the wall. I don't want an overlap up the wall like we typically teach with the uh, uh, traditional systems, nor folding the tape underneath. Let's cut it right to the wall. Now you would never ever put the tool directly on top of this tape. You'd want that tape underneath the carpet. But so that you have a reference as to what's going on with the Cool Glide with relationship to the special tape. The first thing the installer would do would be obviously plug it in and it's immediately ready to go. There's no waiting. I want to make sure that this double line right here is right in the center of that seam. We're going to place this triangle in the transverse mode. We're going to have this right up against the wall. So transverse mode and low, you press your power button. Four seconds of waves. At that point, turn the tool, turn the transverse button off. You're simply on low setting. Press aside, now you're nine seconds of waves. Do you see these triangles on the side? Here and here, okay? When the button goes off, the green light goes off, I like to place my finger here because these I carry with me all the time. And I'm simply gonna advance the cool glide to the next triangle. For nine seconds, once I press the button, it's melting this glue. While that's going on, as an installer, I'm going to manipulate this seam and make sure that I get that seam in good shape, right where I want that to be. And I'm going to continue that all the way down. Now here's a real benefit. In my carpet repair reinstallation school, sometimes with our students, we ended up with a good seam except for one small area of the seam. It didn't come out quite, quite well. Well, with the traditional seaming method, you would have to either pull all the carpet back melt all that tape off and start again. Or you'd have to take a knife, maybe a hawk bill knife, and cut that seam open and re-mechanic an entire seam. Now with this system. Again, if I got a small area of that seam that just didn't quite come out right, right in that one area alone, I'm gonna place the cool glide, press the button. You remember with our, our patch that we did with the cookie cutter, I could pull that piece right out. I can lift that one section of the seam out. I can, with, maybe with a knee kicker, a dead man, a power stretcher, all these tools that, to a novice, you wouldn't know what I'm saying, but you folks that do this work that are also watching this tape know exactly what I'm speaking of. I can re-manipulate, re re-mechanic that seam, press the button, melt it, and I've saved a lot of time and effort, and I'm being able to stay focused on a quality seam, which is what everyone deserves in their home.